Hey, hope you're doing well. My name is Jay and in this video, we're going to learn about seven CSS properties you may not know. So the first one we're going to start is object fit. So here you can see in this, um, I have a basic website here with some CSS. There is a small gallery of photos here. And if you notice, they are a little bit distorted and squished. Um, and that's because um, I added here in the image with 100% and height 100% because my goal was to cover the container of that image. So if I comment out this height, you can see images are different sizes and I want them, I want this image to cover that container. So I'm going to add back that height. The problem with this is the, they are all distorted now. But what you do is you add object fit to that image and you have a couple options, um, contain, cover, fill. So kind of similar to the background size CSS property. Uh, you can do the cover one. So we're going to do the same thing. Let's do cover, save. And now you can see they look perfectly fine. They are covering the whole container and they look really good. So just by adding this line object fit, it works. Next one is background clip. So if you notice here, I have this headline here and I have this background. So what I want to do is I want to put the background inside the text. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's go to the H1 right here. So you, what you can do is do background clip. There you go and do text. Make sure you add WebKit just to make sure it's compatible with the browser. So WebKit and do background clip and let's do text. Let's save. Here you go. So um, it's clipped. You don't see the background, but still white. So you don't see it. So all you have to do is like remove this color and put transparent. That way there is no color. Save that. Now we will be talking. So you can see that the background is right there. So it's clipped and it looks pretty cool. So now next we're going to do the clip path. Kind of similar, but um, we can do any shape, any image right here. So let's test it with this uh, photos. I have here a app that actually lets you create any shape you want. And then it gives you the code down here. You can just copy and then paste it. So let's go ahead. Let's go back here to the site and let's go to that image right here. Let me, and let's just paste that. So clip path and this one is a polygon and then percentages kind of creating that shape. So let's save it. Here you go. So this is because of the image. Um, we have here a container with a gray background. Let's move it back to the actual container, the clip path, save it. And here we go. Now we're clipping all the container and the image. So you can see how powerful this clip path is and you can create any shape you want. As you can see, look at all these options that they have and all you need is that code and you are good to go. All right. Next one is user select. So user select is you can choose if you want the user to select some text or maybe you don't want them to select that test. I don't know. There's a lot of use cases for this, but let's go ahead and test it. So I'm going to go here to my paragraph and I'm going to do user select none. So this is going to mean that user, the user cannot select any paragraph or any P tag. So let's save. And yes, it's not letting me, I can select the headline because it's an H2, but anything else that is a paragraph is not letting me. Now I'm going to this code, this paragraph with a code class, I'm going to change it. So I'm going to do here user select, and I'm going to do all. So all means that you can click once and it's going to select 
everything at once. So you don't have to click and drag to copy. So I'm going to save that. Here we go. So you click once and it selects everything. Now it doesn't let me select any other paragraph, only one with the class of uh, code. And that's about it. Super helpful. Um, I don't know if it's very annoying to kind of disable that selection for the user. It can be very annoying. So just be careful doing that. Just um, I think this all one is very helpful for codes or things that you want people to copy. It's pretty cool. All right. Next one is has. So the has is exactly that you can say um, is if this paragraph code has this specific element or this specific class do this. So for example, um, we can say, let me go to back to the HTML to see what we have here. So inside this paragraph, we have this um, bold text right here with a class of alert. So I can do here P has and I can say bold and change the color to red. So any paragraph that has a bold inside of it changed to red. So let's save that. And there you go. Perfect. Now we can do that with a class too. So there is a class of alerts. If we go back to the HTML alert, so I can just do alert, save. Same thing, still red. Perfect. Now, this has pseudo class is very new. So uh, make sure you update your browser and make sure if you're using this in production. So if you're using this in a website that you are working on, make sure is um, you're using it on something that is not 100% needed because it's very possible that in some browsers are not, it's not going to work. So do your do your research before you use has but is there and is super cool next one is empty empty is just that is another pseudo class that you can use to make sure if something is totally empty you change something so let's go back to the html here and let's go to like a photo let's remove the image save it and you can see that this one is totally empty, right? This photo is empty. So we go back to the CSS. Let's take a look here. I'm just going to copy and paste this one right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do empty. So what's going to happen when that's empty? And this can be a lot of things. Maybe you have a diff that is going to get some data from an API from a server, and then it's going to add it here. But in the meanwhile, while that's empty, you can change it. So for example, we can change the background color, save it. And there you go. We can do things like this. For example, I can do, I can add another pseudo class of before and I can add a content and I can say add loading safe. And I don't think we can see the loading because it's going to be here. Let me remove the clip path. There you go. Now we can see a loading here. So um, you can style it and you can maybe that maybe it doesn't have to be loading. It can be like a animation of like a loading something. Um, spin and circle, things like that. So that's a very good use case for empty. I've used it before for something similar to this, just loading states, um, very simple and easy to do right there. So it's available for you. And I think it's super cool. Next one is accent color. So if you take a look down here, we have this checkbox. To change the color of this checkbox is very tricky and a lot of people, they have headaches and um, now it's very easy to change this default color. So if we go back here to this input, I can do accent color and let's say we do red. There we go. Is that easy? So people start 
adding code there like color or background and and, and it doesn't work sometimes because it's default styling. So now this accent color is actually saving your life with things like this. Um, it's not only for checkbox, your ratios, um, different inputs. So, and those are our seven CSS properties that I think they are very helpful and uh, really good to know that they exist and you can use them. There are a lot more, so if you like this video, subscribe and thank you for watching see ya subscribe if you want to keep learning and click on the bell icon to receive notifications every time i upload a new video thank you so much for watching have a beautiful day bye bye